Hi, I'm Kira, and I'm an animator. You may have seen me on our series, Draw Off. I feel like the human characters are going to be hard. There's human characters? Today, I'm going to be drawing the same drawing in three different mediums. I'm going to be drawing Tom Nook, the cute tanuki landlord from Animal Crossing. So the pose that I chose for Tom Nook is just, you know, simple little one, him sitting down, holding a bag of bells. Something cute. Tom Nook is a super fun character to draw. He's adorable. It makes me sad that like everyone makes fun of him nowadays and everyone's like, oh, he's just, he's just after my money. He doesn't care about me, but I don't know. He's, he, I think he's a good boy. He's just, he's doing his job. I'm gonna do a super light sketch. Don't want it to show through too much with the colored pencils. I'm a little more familiar with drawing with colored pencils because I used to use them a lot in college. I like the textures that you can get with colored pencils. It's pretty cool looking, especially when you scan it in to your computer. It's pretty cool. Like probably the biggest area of color is where I'm gonna start. I don't know, you can start however you want. Something that I forgot about colored pencils is it's like a workout to do. It's just like this constant like scribble, scribble, scribble until you fill in the space. Like it gives you like like a hand cramp doing it. You can see me struggle as I go on. I, uh, I definitely get slower. So what's nice about colored pencils is you can do blending with them. So for his ears and nose, I'm going to take a darker brown and blend it in into a nice gradient. What's also cool about colored pencils is you can kind of like run the lighter color over the darker one to get it into a more smooth, fluid uh, shading. And for those lovely blue eyes, I'm gonna shade them too. I was really looking forward to that part. You wanna make them pop. For areas that are colored white, it helps to add some like very subtle light blue or purple shading just to add a bit of a, you know, dimension to it. I'm also trying something that I haven't really tried before because my uh, my hues are limited here. I'm gonna use a black to try shading things to just uh, bring out those dark shadows a bit more. And actually it worked pretty well. I messed up. You can see I messed up. I uh, wasn't thinking at all and I just straight up colored yellow over where his uh, white sleeve is supposed to be. So tried to fix it a bit with white, but uh, you know what? Accidents happen, you just gotta power through it. And there he is, Tom Nook in colored pencil. This is my wheelhouse here, digital drawing. So we're gonna be drawing in Photoshop. Digital drawing is what I do for a living nowadays. Everything's mostly digital with animation. You know, still the same principles as traditional drawing, but now you have an undo button. Again, same pose for Tom Nook, but this time we have a bit more liberty with the sketch because it's on the layer we can just turn down the opacity instead of having to worry about like erasing or making sure that the lines are like really light so they don't bleed. So I'm using the clean as a whistle brush from Kyle's Mega Pack in Photoshop and I'm gonna use a relatively thick line width. I wanna make it look a bit cartoony. And instead of using that harsh, crisp black, I went for a kind of greenish, dark gray. I don't know, it gives like a, it's like easier on the eyes. It's like softer. What's nice about digital is you can really zoom in and just get in there and put all those little, those details that you normally probably wouldn't be able to get real clear in traditional because you're not good at planning like I am. A technique that I like to do with a lot of my cartoony drawings is I make like the general outline pretty like, you know, thick and consistent. But for things like the, uh, the cuffs of the pants and the shirt and all the little details like inside the body, went for like a smaller brush because uh, I don't know, it gives like a nice hierarchy of line width and shapes. And it also provides a lot of negative space, which is really important when you draw cartoons. Like you have to think about the way that your shapes are laying against each other so that they're readable for the audience. You're seeing me uh, redraw things multiple times and hit that undo button. Again, just the process of getting things how I like them. Inking usually takes the longest for me because I'm like, oh, I gotta get these lines right, you know, before I commit to the color. It's 
nice about digital color is you have access to like literally every color ever. What I like to do is I like to open up the hue and saturation sliders and play with it a bit to try to get it to a, you know, different hues. See what I like, see what works. So for the gradients on the nose and the ears, I switch to an airbrush brush. So that way we can just like gently cascade into the base color. Oh, and you can see me struggle with uh, trying to maintain a good balance of negative space with the, uh, the eye mask. Yeah, I don't want it to touch the sides of his head too much. Went for like a nice muted, soft seafoam green color for the eyes. And then I'm gonna add a bit of like a, uh, like an aqua-y blue for the shading in the eyes. Something I also recommend if you plan to use colors that are not strictly like black and white. For whites, I'm going for a lighter, like off yellowy, off green color. It's very subtle, but it adds a world of difference. It makes it less severe. I didn't want to go for any intense shading in this, just like a, you know, pretty mild cartoon cell shaded look. For the pinks of his ears, I just wanted to make sure that they stood out against the brown, because if you make them look a little too similar in hue to the brown underneath it, it gets lost. And here he is, Digital Tom Nook. Definitely the easiest for me to do. Again, the most familiar with it. It's the one that I work in most frequently. So the watercolors that I'm using are like, I don't really use traditional media as much nowadays because animation is more of a digital medium currently. But you know what? We gotta work with what we got. So I usually start off with a really, really rough sketch. Super light, because when we do the watercolors, we don't want it to bleed through. Also, the paper I'm using is cold press watercolor paper. Really good paper, highly recommend it. So I got my palette here and I'm gonna start mixing that classic Nook Brown. I'm gonna add some white and uh, probably orange or something to get it that more warm, light, pastel -y color. You're gonna watch as I make tons of mistakes and struggle because no matter how old you are and how many years of artistic experience you have, you're always gonna make mistakes. I am a uh, living proof of that. I usually don't use a lot of water because I'm afraid of it. Um, running all over the canvas and uh, seeping into areas where I don't want it to go. So I'm gonna start by filling in all of the biggest spaces that need color. So the brown of Tom Nook, and I'm gonna make sure not to go over the spots where I know I'm gonna use a different color, especially if the color is lighter than the color I happen to be using. Watercolors are not as forgiving in terms of uh, being able to go over them. Because if you get like a dark color into a really light color, it's gonna be real hard to try to get that light color to uh, look consistent again. So like I said, because these tools are super cheap, it looks pretty streaky, but it's okay because any lightness we can fix by letting the watercolors dry and then go over them with a darker color. I'm personally of the opinion that you don't need the most expensive, most high quality art tools in order to make good art. Like, if you have a desire to draw, you're gonna find a way to do it, regardless of whether or not you have the proper tools. Oh yes, you can see how I've already messed up. I, uh, forgot to leave the ears uncolored, so I had to use the pink over the dark brown, which you can, uh, see the dark brown through that pink, but you know what? We're just gonna keep layering it up. We kind of got a cool shadow effect with that dark brown, so, I don't know, happy accident. Despite the fact that I'm a little stressed at how uh, this isn't coming out exactly how I'd like it to, watercolor is really relaxing because I clearly was not satisfied <laughs> with just the watercolor alone. I decided to take an ink pen and ink all around the drawing to give it like that nice tied together cartoony look. I don't know, I think it just uh, makes it pop a bit more, looks a bit more satisfying in my eyes. And there we go, watercolor Tom Nook. Honestly, for all the struggle that I was going through while painting this and just the unsatisfaction at the streakiness, uh, it came out pretty good. You can look at a drawing forever and ever and be like, this is stupid, I hate this. But then like, you take a break from it or you just look at the full picture and you're like, you know what? 
I did it. It's okay. I can draw. Just, it's okay. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I really hope that this shows that no matter what artistic medium you work in, you can make the art that you want to. You should just do it because it makes you happy. <laughs>